Welcome, everyone, to the Marijuana Time Show for February 7th, 2018. I'm your host, Joe Claire. Welcome to all of you listening on Apple Podcasts, the audio version of the show. Search Marijuana Time is on Apple Podcasts to find that. Also, the videos, of course, can be found at YouTube and Facebook. Or rather, should I say on YouTube and on Facebook. Search the Marijuana Times on those respective platforms. Also, you can find every single episode of this show on MarijuanaTimes.org. Not only that, you can find myself and many other great writers covering the cannabis community, uh, the industry, and beyond all the news and opinion you need about cannabis. MarijuanaTimes.org. Today, we've got three big stories as usual. What's going on in Colorado? Maybe a little dismissal of marijuana convictions it's in the works, or at least in talks. Also, the latest on recreational legalization, the possibility of that in Florida, and reports out of San Diego on the first month of retail sales. All that is coming up on the Marijuana Time Show. But of course, first, I have to tell you about our proud sponsor, NatureSideCannabis.com. If you are a cannabis cultivator in a legal state, well, a couple things. First of all, you don't want to be using harmful chemicals on your grow. You don't want to be the, your customers to be ingesting harmful chemicals in their product. You also don't want to run afoul of various regulations. Most states now have regulations concerning pesticide use. When it comes to what you put on your cannabis cultivation, NatureSide Cannabis line of organic, all-natural pesticides are... Whoops, there we go. I did that wrong. I did that right. Nature science. All natural organic pesticides are on the approved for use list in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. If you're a cannabis cultivator, don't want to be using harmful chemicals. Use organic, all natural pesticides from naturesidecannabis.com. Site is spelled C I D E. Go check them out. A proud sponsor of the Marijuana Time Show. Thank you, Nature Side Cannabis. First story comes from MarijuanaTimes.org. It's by Julia Granowitz. Colorado might be dismissing nonviolent cannabis convictions. We did a story, I think it was last week, about San Francisco doing something similar. Other cities in California are talking about the same thing. In Colorado, where cannabis has been legal for adult use, sale, and cultivation, and it has been legal since voters approved it by the ballot measure in 2012. This issue is finally being discussed. Monday morning, Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper said that he attended an unofficial meeting regarding dismissing marijuana convictions for nonviolent offenders. He said, quote, It's roughly 40 cases where you can be absolutely sure there was no violence involved in the sentencing. For several of the people, a number of them, it was multiple times that they had been arrested and prosecuted for marijuana or marijuana sales. It means that there are at least 40 cases where they already would qualify to be dismissed if the plan moves forward. And with plans to go over each case individually, there's a good chance that many more who were incarcerated prior to the implementation of legalization will find themselves freed sooner than intended. Now, they're just in the beginning talks of this. There's no word about uh, what kind of criteria will be used, how far they'll go back, how it'll be implemented, any of that. But um, it's definitely a, a good first step. And, and even if it is only 40 people, that's that's 40 more people who have gotten real justice. It's hard to justify keeping someone in jail or leaving them with a criminal record that makes it harder for them to get loans and get an education and so on. It's harder to justify keeping those people with criminal records or keeping them in jail, in a worst case scenario, when what they did is now legal. If what they did is now legal, there's no violence involved, you're not putting violent people back on the street, then it seems like a no-brainer to go through and help these people and uh, get them back into society, get them back into the workforce. It's a great idea. And hopefully it's something that will follow many legalization plans around the country, uh, states which are already legal and states where it will be legal in the future. And uh, hopefully things like this will, be start, will start to be included in legalization plans and legalization bills, ballot, measure, ballot measures, legislature bills, whatever. All of that... Uh, is a good thing. This is a good thing, and uh, hopefully it's 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 a trend. It's not just a you know it's going to happen maybe here, maybe happen here. Uh, hopefully it's a trend that happens everywhere where there is legalization. You can go check that story out. MarijuanaTimes.org. 
This next story is from MiamiNewTimes.com. Floridians won't vote on recreational weed after advocates miss the deadline. Um, Regulate Florida is a group in Florida that's been trying to get recreational legalization on the ballot for quite a long time. And um, the um, advocates hope to nab 766,000 signatures by February 1st to get full marijuana legalization on November's ballot. But the organizers tell New Times they came up well short of that goal, according to Michael Minardi, who was a Florida attorney in the face of Regulate Florida. The group spent months gathering signatures, but Minardi says they ended up with only around 40,000 valid signatures. So the group is now shifting its sights to the 2020 election, which means it has two years to start over and acquire more than three quarters of a million signatures. His first goal was to gather new signatures. He would have to get 40,000 so that the state Supreme Court could definitely review his petition and state whether it's written in line with the state's constitution. If the group receives prior approval from the highest court, that would be a boost for Minority's cause for 2020. He said, quote, our main goal right now is to get the Supreme Court review. That's the first hurdle that we have to pass in order to get this on the ballot in 2020. Well, you may be saying, well, they need 766,000 signatures and they got 40,000 signatures. That's quite a gap. And you're right, it's a massive, massive gap. To say that they fell short is an understatement. Now, in the rest of this article, Minardi is, is very optimistic about getting more funding, which I think they raised like $265,000. They're going to need a lot more than that. They're going to need millions and millions of dollars in fundraising to be able to get the signatures that they need. After the fundraising, he's also optimistic that they can get these 766,000 signatures that are needed in 2020. He's hoping that the problems that are be they're being have <clears throat> that they're having right now when it comes to the medical marijuana bill amendment two in Florida, uh, like for instance, smoking has been taken out of the bill. Uh, the state has is having a real tough time, a really tough time implementing regulations for the medical marijuana bill. He's hoping all of that will convince people that they need to get on the bandwagon for recreational legalization. If a true marijuana law reform is going to come. To Florida, there's a lot of people in Florida, medical patients and recreational customers that are waiting for various factions to get their act together. The state needs to get their act together and implement medical marijuana. Regulate Florida needs to get their act together and do a better job of getting signatures and getting fundraising. And if you're in Florida, you need to help on both those fronts. You need to contact your whoever's your, your state senator, your state representative, and tell them to get moving on medical marijuana. Tell them to put more pressure on the regulators to get moving on that. And make a donation to Regulate Florida. If you think that recreational marijuana legalization is something that, ha- that should happen in Florida, well, you need to get involved. Whether it's you know donations or sharing stories about it or you know telling your friends about it. Whatever you can do, they need help. As pointed out, 40000 is a long way from 766000 So if you're in Florida, get on it. Because it's not going to happen on its own. Even with uh, a lot of help... It's going to be a long, hard road, especially for, reg- uh, for for recreational marijuana. You see the problems they're having with medical marijuana and getting that implemented, and that got 71% of the vote. That was a pretty popular bill that still isn't implemented because they're they're dragging their feet. Various regulatory bodies and regulators aren't just aren't doing their job. They're not getting it done. As we pointed out yesterday, with uh, the, the delay, the possible more, the possible new delay in Massachusetts with retail sales. These people are regulators. They're government bureaucrats. This is what they do. This is their job. You would think that they would be better at it, but uh, in some places, apparently, they are not. This last story comes from San Diego Union Tribune.com. San Diego reports brisk business during the first month of recreational marijuana sales. Now, apparently, cities only have to um, they don't have to do monthly figures and give them to the state. They only have to put in quarterly figures. When it comes to recreational marijuana sales, but uh, San Diego cannabis retailers say the first month of recreational marijuana sales has been far stronger than expected, testing their ability to handle crowds and to deliver pot to people's homes with the speed and efficiency of Amazon. That's a that's a tall order, but you know, hey, aim high, as they say, and that's not a pun. That's an actual piece of advice. Aim high. Retailers also say <clears throat> say the sale of adult use marijuana, which began on January first has led to a surge in older customers. Some want cannabis to ease medical conditions. Others just want to take the edge off. Rocky Goyle, who founded the Apothecary, Apothecary, I guess that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled much differently, but I'm assuming that that's what they were going for. 
Uh, marijuana stores in Kearney, Mesa, and Mission Valley said, quote, we're getting a lot of soccer moms from Carmel Valley and Del Mar who are looking for an alternative to a glass of wine. Now, as I said before, none of the stores have released sale figures. We only have to report those to the state on a quarterly basis. But retailers who run seven stores in San Diego told the Union Tribune that demand has remained strong since January 1st when long lines formed at the dispensaries. Uh, for example, William Sand, founder of Urban Leaf, estimates that his store in Bay Park will pay the city at least $80,000 in local cannabis taxes for the month of January. That figure indicates the store will do upwards of $1.5 million in business this month, and that figure could be far higher. The store has 55, had 55 employees in December. Now it has 220 employees, roughly half of whom are delivery drivers. Uh, Sen also operates a store in Stockton section of San Diego and plans to open one in Middleton near Little Italy. Now, if you're not from the San Diego area like I'm not, you have no idea where any of these places are. But you get the point. Demand is still huge in San Diego. And it's, been, it's a month in the sales. You know, they're not, they're not reporting that there's been any slacking off or any tapering when it comes to demand, which is not surprising. There's a lot of people in California. There's a lot of people in the San Diego area, area alone. And until supply expands in the state to meet the demand, and that's the demand for the whole state, because obviously if people, if you're close to San Diego and you can't buy recreational marijuana where you are, well, maybe you'll get in the car and you'll take a drive to San Diego. I'm sure a lot of people are doing that. And until supply comes up to meet demand, it's there's going to be lines. There's going to be lines in places in San Diego or San Francisco, or now they're open to recreational, uh, recreational sales have begun in Los Angeles. It's going to be a lot of people, and it's interesting they talk about, like um, Sen said, a lot of people who are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s used to consume are coming back into the market now that cannabis is legal recreationally. It's going to bring a lot of older folks. Actually, you know, obviously, young people, they have their plugs, their hookups, their dealers, whatever they're used to buying. It's nothing for them to slide over to recreational, maybe go back to the, the black market when they want to, maybe bounce back and forth. But again, uh, you know, a, a soccer mom who's, uh, you know, in her 40s and, and and she doesn't know any dealers, you know, maybe she tried marijuana back in her 20s or in college and it helped, uh, you know, maybe she's got some arthritis, maybe she got to make some pains. And she says, well, you know what, it's legal now. What's the big deal? I can go into a nice retail shop and buy some. And that's great. And that's going to attract a lot of people that, that hesitated before when it comes to getting into the the marijuana buying business, as it were. Overall, legalization is not going to cause use to explode, but it is going to bring people, obviously uh, older people mostly, are going to be the, the bulk of the new customers. And it's going to bring them in and they're going to come and see what it's, what it's about. Maybe it's not their cup of tea. Maybe it is, but they, they're not the type of people that, you know, can just walk down the street and they know some guy who's got some or they know someone they can call to bring some to them and now it's legal. What's what's the harm now? Maybe they, maybe legality and uh, obviously a legal supply or somewhere to get it was the last hurdle for them to want to get back into cannabis use. Maybe they're tired of drinking wine. I don't know. It's each their own. The point is obviously that they have the choice now they can buy cannabis legally as they can buy wine legally. That's going to do it for us. And the Marijuana Time Show. I'm Joe Claire. It's February 7th, 2018. Thank you to NatureSideCannabis.com, organic, all-natural pesticides for being a proud sponsor of the show. If you want to sponsor the show, email info at MarijuanaTimes.org. Let us know, and we will talk at you about it. It's the Marijuana Times Show. Keep spreading the word about the show. Like, share, comment on all the videos. Share the videos on MarijuanaTimes.org. Help us spread the truth about cannabis in our own small way and continue to grow the show. Thanks everybody for checking us out and we will see you next time on the Marijuana Time Show. (laughs) 